Good morning, it's Monday the 1st of May 2017 gang, welcome along to this morning's United Kingdom talk and very very important, before millions of you uh, Barry Manilow fans tell me it is time to change the calendar to see what exciting new picture of Barry Manilow is about to appear on our calendar provided Annually, boys and girls, annually by Great Fanilo herself, Wendy Young. Here we go. Let's see what the photo is today. Oh, yes. Here it comes. Here it comes. Oh. A nice close-up. There we are. That's not a bad picture, is it? None of them are bad pictures. There we are. A close-up of Barry next to his... What looks like a, a Sennheiser microphone, boys. I've got one of those. I've got two of those. And next to his sign, not as, not as new as that one, a Sennheiser. Is it Stein or Sennheiser? Next to his Sennheiser microphone. Very, 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 very nice picture of Barry Mando. Now, I have to tell you, some of these 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 calendars come out, of course, once a year, and um, I, I they certainly did it this year. I don't know if they do it every year, but they they actually look for fans' photographs. And if you've got a great photograph of Barry Manilow, you send it in, and they look at them all and they choose them, and that's what they use for the calendar. I don't know if the people get anything for you for that. Do you, do you get paid for that, or <clears throat> you know, some sort of donation to the? Um, I think Eloise, actually. Eloise, who, who's a big Ma Barry Manilow fan, who incidentally bought this cat for me uh, 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 some uh, about a year ago now. I think one of her photos is actually in there. I don't know if you get paid for that or not. We must find that out. I shall, I shall happily snap away when Barry returns to the UK. Oh, yes. You've probably seen him all over the television last week, did you? On that dreadful one programme. One, one, what bring back nationwide. I keep telling them that. Da 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 ba 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 we want Nationwide back. Anyway, he was on the one show last night. Very funny, he was. He was very funny. He's been on uh, Lorraine. Oh, oh, how lovely you are. Oh, hi, hi, I'm Lorraine. Go away, Lorraine. You are one of the most annoying people ever on the telly. He's been on there. Uh, what else has he been on? Something else as well. I think he's been on Radio 2 this week. 88 to 91 FM. This is Radio 2 from the BBC. He's everywhere. But he is not coming to perform this year. Oh. Disapp I feel like one of... As soon as I said that, I immediately felt like one of those limp hanging baskets because he's not coming. Sad and unhappy. Oh. But... He is coming in September 2018. Yes, Barry is coming back to the UK and it will be a tour, I'm sure, of many of the venues of the UK. How exciting. Start saving your money now. Start saving. And if you have never been to a Barry Manilow concert before, make sure you don't go on holiday in September. You haven't been to a concert until you've been to a Barry Manilow concert. Britney Spears? What? Britney Spears. Oh, we're going to see Britney. What? Uh, oh, we're going to see Kylie. Huh? Oh, I was so excited. We're going to the Madonna concert. Oh, oh, oh it made me feel quite ill and tired now. I mean, they're all very good, but they're not Barry concerts, lovey. They're not Barry concerts. You need to go to a Barry Manilow concert. Thank you very much. Let's say hello to some early people arriving this morning. Good morning to Sean Michael Crabtree. Sean, why is Sean spelled S-E-A-N? Why don't we pronounce the H? I don't understand that. Why are you not called Seen? In fact, some people that spell their names S-E-A-N are called Seen. But you're called Sean, and yet there's no H. I don't understand. This is one of Earth's mysteries. Sean says, good morning, Chris. Hope your Sunday night went well. Yes, it did. We had a fantastic night last night. Did uh, a karaoke at the Camden Eye in Camden last night on the, I think it's Finchley. It's not on Camden Eye Street. It's on Finchley Road. But it's, I mean, there's Camden Eye Street and there's, there's, there's where it is right at the beginning of Finchley. It was fantastic. What a wonderful crowd in there. 
Oh, we had a scream in there. And that will be starting every week, but not for two weeks. OK, so off, off, on. Yeah. So does that make it in three weeks or two weeks? I'm not quite sure. I think it's three weeks. Because it's on the third week. So in three weeks, so off, off, on. Three weeks on. One moment, please. I shall now refer to the Barry Manilow calendar. You see, not only does it look good, it's useful as well. A little bit like myself. A little bit like myself. That was so, 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 like seven, four, two, 21st, I think. Off, off, on. Yes. May the 21st. Sunday, May the, from Sunday, May the 21st, we'll be doing karaoke at the Camden Eye in Camden Town every Sunday between 8 p.m. and 11 p.m. So uh, do come and join us down there. Great night, great night. Good morning to uh, Ray Reynolds, who joins us this morning. Gustav says good morning to the international sensation, Mr. Chris Reardon, and his millions of viewers, millions all over the world, joining us at all different points of the show as well. I'm fully aware that some people aren't quite opening their eyes at 10 o'clock in the morning. Certain lazy people in bed who refuse to get up and get jobs. I hope you're not one of them this morning. Good morning to Rod Brown, who says I might be able to watch the whole show live today. Good morning, Rod. Morning. Uh, Elaine is with us. Hi, Chris and everyone. Today is Memorial Day in Israel for the uh, soldiers and people that have died there. So I'll be a passive listener viewer today. I love being passive, Elaine. I really do. I used to be very active. Uh, I became passive about 15, 15 years ago, and I much, much prefer being passive. I really do. Good morning, Elaine. Um, Sharon Stone is there. Pinch and a punch. It's the first day of the month and no returns, Sharon. I thought you might have turned up last night. Sharon, you would have loved it. That is your place in there. Your place, Sharon. Um... Sean is going to climb Mount Snowden. What do you want to do that for, dear? Oh, no. Far too much effort. Can't you just take some pictures from the bottom? Why do you want to climb up a mountain? It's like these idiots who climb up Everest. Oh, I'm going to climb up Everest. Uh, you know, and what does that achieve? What does that achieve? Uh, oh, oh, I'm at the top. Right. And? Well, I'm, I've climbed up Everest. Yes, and? What? What does that achieve? All that danger. People die doing that. <clears throat> I hope you don't die going up Mount Snowden. I can't afford to lose viewers and listeners, you know. I really can't afford to lose viewers and listeners. <laughs> don't be climbing up little old Mount Snowden. Why don't you just wait until they install one of those lifts? Or maybe an escalator. I like that word, escalator. Do you like that word, escalator? I nearly, I nearly was dragged under an escalator once. It, only recently... About five years ago, me and my friend Ronnie, whose birthday it was yesterday, I got him a cake yesterday. Now, you didn't see, I did film that, but I haven't, I've forgotten to put it on the system, so you, I can't show it to you yet. Just a minute. <clears throat> no, it's not over there. No. Um, yes, uh, I filmed him getting his birthday cake yesterday. And he was very, I think he was very, very pleased with his repaired shoe rack from the range. Very, very pleased with that. Anyway, before, funnily enough, before that place came, became the range, it was Tesco's home, home base or so, home and where, isn't it? Tesco's home and where, and it had an escalator going up it. <clears throat> and one day I had to go in there. What was I looking at? Maybe, um, toner cartridges, I think, for my, for my brother to printer. I was on the escalator going up the stairs and I got to the top and then I went to take my foot off the escalator onto the floor and the lace had caught and my foot was being dragged under there. I could have been sucked off, sucked under, sucked under the escalator, you know. No one cares. He was laughing. My mate was laughing. Very dangerous. And I was tugging my foot. I thought my foot's going to go under there and just at the last moment, my leg became free and it was placed safely on the top. Ever since then, I've only used the stairs. I won't go on an escalator. I'm frightened of escalators now. <laughs> Terrible things, dear. Um, so good luck. Please don't climb up Mount Snowden, dear. Very dangerous. Years ago, when it was in the Scouts, we went to the Lake District. Um, and we went canoeing in this lake and all that business. What a wonderful part of the world that is. Wherever you are watching this show, 
If you get a chance to go on a holiday to the Lake District here in the UK in Cumbria, then please go. It's beautiful up there. Last time I went, I was about 15 years old. I was with the scouts. And they went walking along this ledge, which was on top of the mountain. But I'm scared of heights. I'm terrified of heights. And I wouldn't go. I stayed in the, ca in the, um, in the little transit van that he used to drive around in. We used to have this transit van. Our scout group was with the, the first Roehampton scouts. And this old transit van, I'm not joking. There were rust holes in the bottom. You could actually see the road. <laughs> while while we while we were sitting in the transit van. That's how bad it was, this old transit van. You wouldn't be allowed to drive one of those now. No fun anymore. There's no danger. Is there? There's a lot of danger going up mountains, dear. Don't do it, Sean. Don't do it, Nelly. No. <clears throat> Good morning to Elo Ah, Eloise is with us this morning. Eloise. Um, I'm sure one of our ah, She's replied. Oh, isn't that, isn't that funny? You see, you say something and they're there. Eloise says she got nothing for the calendar. Two, oh, she got two photos in there in 2017. I'm tempted. Can you tell us? Oh, no. You know what I don't like doing, Eloise, is showing a photo on the calendar before it's that month. I think that's cheating. Is that one of yours on there? Is that one up there one of yours? And I can't show the previous ones because I've got a bit of sellotape on the top now because the little hole keeps breaking. Oh, it's most annoying. I need to get, you know, those little circles that you can buy in Ryman's and, and stationery shops and WH Smith's little circles that you can buy. And you, and you stick them on holes that are in bits of paper and then it doesn't tear again. I think they're made out of some sort of material. Very good. Eloise, what dates are your pictures? Please let us know, my darling. All right. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in September 2018 as well. Very, very exciting. Yes. Good morning to Wayne. Ah, yes. Elaine says, no, they don't get paid, but they get credit. Thank you. Uh, Wayne, says, the mic is a Sennheiser. Ah, Sennheiser. So there's no T, is it? Steinheiser. Sennheiser. Because I've got a, 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 a an SM. Actually, I've got two. I've got two sure radio mics, Wayne. Um, but for some reason, at the central station, I get a bit of a problem. They cut out. It's like there's interference coming from somewhere. And I've swapped the mics and I've swapped the receivers and I've swapped the power supplies, power supplies and still getting this. Um, it's not so much a cut out. It's more of a, a, of, a, of a bang. And I've tried different frequencies and everything. And it only happens there. I can't work it out. There must be some sort of maybe a fridge or something in Central Station uh, interfering with the wireless signals. I could try my Sennheiser one, I suppose, and which I generally only use for the quiz night. I've had that about six years, that Sennheiser. Very good mate. I bought a new um, power, power supply thing for it. Only £12, which is very reasonable, isn't it? Good morning to Kelly Kim. Good morning, Kelly Kim. Now, I, I, I saw something. I think it was you, Kelly Kim. And Kelly Kim has recently been... Oh, didn't I get this up? I thought I had this up. It looks like you went, let me see if I can find this, to a, a, a Cluedo-type thing. Let me see if I can find that now. It was either you or Laura, or both of you, probably both of you, because they are best friends, Kelly Kim and Laura. Uh, will you be coming to karaoke next Sunday, Kelly Kim? In Sydenham, OK? Sydenham, Kelly Kim, on, uh, on this coming Sunday. Let me see if I can find it. Here it is. Here it is. Now, I, this looks good. Yes, Kelly Kim went to it. Clue HQ, which it says is the live escape game in Brentwood. Now, let me see if I can find something about this, because this looks good. This would be for intelligent people, boys and girls, intelligent people. Probably I wouldn't get on very well here at all, but we'll have a little look. Clue HQ. Clue. Here we go. Let's have a look. This is this is something to do. Uh, oh, it's all over the place. They've got Manchester, Blackpool, Leicester, Birmingham. Glasgow, Coventry, Swindon, Sunderland, Brentwood and Warrington. What would be my nearest one? I, I would I think Swindon, actually. Probably Swindon would be my nearest one. Uh, it's a select location. Oh, OK. Well, that's Swindon. Let's have a look at this. Anything happening? Oh, in it's slow, their website. Dreadful. 
Well, so far, not a very good website, I have to say. I'm clicking around trying to find what it's all about. I, uh, it, it looks. Oh, okay, so there's, there's different escape games, is there? It different, look, here's one here, look, it's called Bunker 38, this escape game. Uh, it takes 60 minutes, it says, wheelchair accessible, excellent. Uh, when in when wheelchair in use, maximum group size of four. Okay, flashing lights are you? Well, what, well, tell us about the blooming game for Christ's sake. Ah, uh, here we are. You've been living in an underground bunker for years due to a radiation leak. Now that you've been given the all clear, but you're locked in and oxygen levels are running low. Well, run even lower if I was there chatting away, wouldn't they? With only 60 minutes of breathable air left, will you be able to escape in time? And I suppose you go there and do this. It's not like a game on a on a um, on a screen or something like that. There's another one here now. Uh, the betrayal of Clu Tan Carmen. Just over a month ago, the long lost tune of Clu. Cluton Carmen was unearthed for the first time in over five millennia. That's longer than Jesus, as well, isn't it? Isn't it? Uh, a team of experts were sent in to recover the Cluton crystal, a jewel believed to be possessed the power of the Nile. It has been several days since last contact with the exploring party, so it's time to send a new expedition down to the tomb to retrieve the crystal. But watch your step. Who knows what happened to the last exploring party? So that looks a good thing to do if you're ever bored. Maybe take a family there or something. Look it up. It's called Clue H Clue. What is it? Clue hq.co.uk or something like that and there's one there's probably one near you so that looks a lot of fun kelly kim i have to say although possibly not as much fun as one of my karaoke nights thank you very much uh good morning to diane jeb good morning diane hope you're well lovey um elaine says britney spears is coming to israel in july well whoopee do you know, Britney Spears, does she do any live at all, dear? My heart is killing me. Oh, kill me, baby, one more time. Not my cup of tea, dear. I mean, she's all right. I wouldn't go and see her in a concert, though. You know, not Britney, lovey. Certainly not the Spice Girls and definitely not Little Minx or whatever their name is, dear. God, aren't they pigs? Little, Have you seen them, Little Mix? The ugliest girl band that you've ever seen in your life. I mean, they've got nothing on Banana Rama or the Supremes, dear. Little Mix, look them up. How much makeup can you get on a face, for Christ's sake? It's almost dripping off there's so much makeup on their faces. Dear me. Um, good morning to Jerry Green this morning. Good morning, Jerry, sir. Elaine says two weeks to see Barry in Los Angeles and Chicago. Yes, he's doing a bit of an American tour at the moment. So that's excellent for the uh, American girls. I, I, no doubt some of the English girls are going over there as well. And the Welsh and the Scottish and the Northern Irish. Oh, we've got to include everyone, haven't we, dear? I'm really offended. I'm from Northern Ireland and you didn't mention Northern Ireland. I'm really offended. I'm Welsh and you didn't mention the Welsh. Oh, I'm really offended. I'm Scottish and we want independence from everyone. <laughs> <laughs> moan and moan and moan. What the what you need is a safe zone. What is it? A safe room. Oh, this is something they've got at universities now. Oh, wait till you hear about that later. I've been seeing some stories, and I, I'm I'm starting to believe one of the things that is wrong with what's that in my pocket? I felt something hard. What's that? Just a minute. Oh, it's a pen top. I wonder what that was. Who put that pen top in my pocket? There's a pen top in my pocket. <laughs> Strange. Yes, I've been seeing some things going on in universities. And quite frankly, I think that's what's wrong with the country. What are they doing at the universities? Anyway, I'll come, I'll come on to that in a minute, all right? Uh, good morning to Ray Reynolds, who says, I can't smile without you. I can't smile without you, Ray. Karaoke nights at Central Station are not the same when you're not there, lovey. Where you go swanning off to do another worldwide performance somewhere else, dear. Very disappointed. Complaints come in, dear. Where's Ray Reynolds? We have come to see Ray Reynolds tonight and you're not there. Ray's got a lovely ukulele. Oh, the uh, please bring the posh one tonight. Not the cheap one that you made from Maplins or wherever it's come from. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm surprised I got an air this morning when I did. 
God's sake, you should have seen me sneezing just as I was running my little piece of music. Oh, I found something out. I found something out. My sister, my sister hates the music. This one. Absolutely hates it. Isn't that funny? I think that's a very, very pleasant piece of music that I really do. How can you hate this music, sis? She says she logs on the other day to watch the show and this music was playing, so she switched it off again and forgot I was on. That's nice, isn't it? That's nice. Maybe, sis, maybe, sis, I will forget to put your name on my pension thing if something happens to me. Because at that pension meeting I had the other day, apparently you can put someone's name on there so that if you die, they carry on getting your money for four years. I told my best mate about that. His little face lit up. It soon was wiped off his face when I said it'd be my sister's name going on there. <laughs> well, it might not be hers now, unless she, she watches the show a little bit more regularly. Cheek. You should leave the money to people who love you. I mean, the cat. I'd leave it to the cat, man. I'm not quite sure how much longer she's going to go on for, my loves. I've got to take her to the vet, that growth round there. I cancelled it last Wednesday. I chickened out. Do you know that? Yeah, I, I did have an appointment last Wednesday or Thursday. I can't remember now. Um, <clears throat> let's have a look. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Ah, Sean is climbing the mountain for charity. What? <sighs> you don't actually have to climb Mount Snowden, Sean. No, if you get someone who's good with photographs, you can have a photo of the mountain and a photo of you and they can put it together so that you look like you're going up the mountain. Now, obviously, you're going to have to look like you're climbing. So the photo will have to be something like this, you know, like that, would it? Like that, you know, with those stick things. What are they called? Have I got anything here? Let me have a look. Uh, oh, well, I've got this. I mean, this is a bit like a stick, you know. It's, a, it's actually a feather duster, which clearly isn't used enough in here, but there we are. But you could, you know, oh, my mirror ball. That's, you know, like a stick like that. That's it. Right, like that. And then they would take that picture in your various different poses. Oh, and uh, <laughs> make sure that you look a little bit rough when they're taking the picture. Oh, well, actually, that you won't have to do much about that. You, you generally do anyway. But uh, try and look even rougher than you usually do so that it looks like you're going through great effort. I mean, obviously, you don't want to be, you know, having a, like, a big smile or something like that or those stupid pouting lips that people do. I mean, how stupid do they look? It just amazes me. These people that take selfies of themselves and they do that, you know, with their lips. They think it looks good. They actually think it looks good. No, it doesn't. You look stupid. <clears throat> you look absolutely stupid. Mm -hmm. Smile, for God's sake. I've got some good smiles. Smile. But don't do that, Sean, while you're doing your mountain climbing. Absolutely not. No. You've got to look like you're absolutely knackered and washed out and you're barely living, dear. So you probably won't have to change your face an awful lot to do that. But if you just shove some dirt on it and some snow, get them to take the photograph, superimpose it over Mount Snowden, and that'd be excellent. Perhaps you could have a couple of people with you as well. Maybe a cat and a dog, you know. Make sure you have a dog with only two or three legs, though, because they always get more money. It's like these people in the street, the homeless people in the street with the dogs and all that. Have you noticed that there's always a leg missing? Not of the homeless person, the dog, or a ta half a towel. I mean, I don't know what they do with the other half. Maybe they eat it. Can you make anything with dogs' towels? They've always got or, or one eye, you know, like that. Poor dog's got one eye, something like that. Always those people in the street have got dogs like that. They never have cats. Have you noticed that? Why don't they have cats? Or gerbils? I like gerbils. We had gerbils at school. Did you have a gerbil at school? You could have that, the, the people in the street collecting the money. Instead of having a dog, have a gerbil. And so much easier to take care of. 
You wouldn't have to spend much time picking the mess up of the floor of those, would you, lovey? Hmm. Um. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sean. Uh, uh, let me have a look. Uh, do, 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 do. Good morning to Terry H, who's with us this morning. Morning, Terry. Uh, Elaine says she's going to take me boating on the Sea of Galilee. That sounds a lovely day out, Elaine. That sounds absolutely lovely. Have you got a little boat? Is it one of those with the thing, you know... Do, 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 We've got those at Skegness. Dreadful place. Please don't go to Skegness. If you're coming over... From another country to visit the UK, do not go to Skegness. My sister loves it there. It is an absolute dive. It really is. You've got this massive fun fair with about 8 million people trying to get on one Dodgem car. If you like chips and ice trip chips and ice cream, you'll have a fabulous time. There is a row of shops on my life. It's chip shop, chip shop, chip shop, ice cream shop, chip shop, chip shop, all next to each other. I mean, how many chips can people eat? Absolutely ghastly place. Do not go to Skegness. It is a dump. And those donkeys. Oh, they're so sad. I hope and I didn't see any donkeys in Israel when I was there. Only electric push bikes. Much more sensible. You see these great big people approaching the donkeys. The donkey looks terrified. I'm telling you now. Great big fat things they are. Oh, let's go on the donkey. The fat bloke from West Five. I bet he's tried to get on a donkey. I feel sorry for those donkeys. It's outrageous. It really is. Oh, dear, dear me. <clears throat> I like the sound of the boating, though. Is it the things with the paddles that you turn around? Or is it oars? Or do you just push a button? <clears throat> do you just push a button, um, Elaine? And the boat just takes us somewhere. Like an automatic boat. Do they have those? I wonder if they have those at the same time as we get the automatic cars, which I'm looking forward to. Just pushing a button and going to sleep while the car whisks me in and out of London to my jobs. Mm. Good morning, Adam Philip. I haven't seen you there before, Adam. Morning, Adam. Hope you're enjoying the show today. Uh, Joe Chapman is there. Good morning, Joe. Hello, sir. Joe's there. Were you there um, Saturday or Friday night? At Central Station. We had a wonderful time at Central Station Friday and Saturday this week. We had the karaoke Friday. Saturday we had a uh, drag act, Miss Jason, who just spent the entire night ripping me apart. <laughs> complaining about the lights and complaining about the sound. But then she advertised my show. She said, yes, you've got to watch Chris Reardon's show. What's the address? So I told him. Know. And then and I thought, well, that's strange. She doesn't usually advertise that sh uh, advertise my show. And then she dropped in. How about if I give you a nice picture of myself, you know, in a nice frame? You could put it on the wall behind you. Do you think we should have a picture of Miss Jason up here? You see, the trouble is you put one up there and they think you're giving them favouritism. Although I probably would give Miss Jason the, 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 the uh, Miss Jason favouritism uh, in front of others. I probably would actually. She's wonderful, 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 wonderful. Uh, Kelly Kim says, Clue HQ was so much fun. Uh, the one she went to is in Essex, so that would be, is that the Brentwood one? It did look quite good. I just imagined it something like Cluedo or something like that. I wonder what 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 figure in Cluedo I would be. Professor, is it, which, 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 is it Professor Plum? Or someone like that. It's years since I played Cluedo. It really is not very good at that. I don't think I'd be a very good police detective. Not like in that excellent programme that I watched last night, uh, or, or yes, last night when I came home from work, the last episode of Line of... Was it Line of Duty? Line of Duty on BBC One Colour. Did you watch it? Oh, my God, it was fantastic. Just to cut a long, long, long story short, the bloke at the top was totally corrupted. It was really good. What a climax. I thought, well, I just watched 20 minutes of this. I'll go to bed and watch the rest with my breakfast in the morning. No, I had to watch it all. Got to bed eventually about 2.15. That was, it was really good line of duty. Anyone else see that last night? Brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Um, uh, Wayne says, your sister has good taste. I don't like that music either. What, this one? How 
Why can you not like that, Wayne? I think I might start playing this little bit of music in between my karaoke singers. What do you reckon? Yes, I will do that tonight. I will do that tonight. We will play a little flute music in between the karaoke singers tonight. And Wayne doesn't like that. Wayne doesn't like it. Well, that's, it's so you don't like that. What's, what sort of music do you play at your discos then? No wonder you're not a very successful DJ, lovey. If you don't like tunes like that, what do you like? You haven't even been to a Barry Manilow concert, have you, Wayne, lovey? God's sake, man. Elaine says, do you go to the Vladimir Putin School of Photography? <laughs> oh, how is Mr. Putrid? We haven't heard from him for a while, have we? Not since the bloke from King Chong Ching Chong Moo Woo Woo from North Korea and uh, uh, Donald Trump. Donald Trump has start rowing. Do the Americans know what in English is meant by Trump? That's the question. <laughs> I bet you don't, do you? <laughs> that is the whole funny thing about it. The word Trump means something very funny in English. Do you know, Eloise? Or Elaine? Or Elaine as well? I don't know if you know what it means in Ireland, uh, in Israel. Do you know what Trump means if you're in another country? The English people will all be laughing now. They will. Uh, good morning to John Child. Morning, John. A rare chance to catch a long live show. I thought you were popping down like you missed a very good night last night, John, at the Camden Eye. Every Sunday, OK, that's from the 21st of this month. We start every Sunday there, all right? Um, <laughs> Jerry Green says, I like the music. Here it is again. Eloise doesn't know what it means. Here it is. Jerry Green, just for you. Oh, I love that bit of music. We, I could change that music if I wanted to. Do anything I want. Anything. Anything I want. But I love it. I love the music. I think it's very sad that you don't like that wonderful piece of music. Elaine says, Trump, when a card is more valuable than another card, it's a bridge term. Uh -uh. Incorrect, Elaine. Yes, you are correct. But that's not the meaning I'm talking about right now. Anyone else from other countries, not the English lot, anyone else from other countries know what Trump means? Uh, I'll, I'll put it in context. I've just trumped. Anyone know what that means if you're not in the UK? All right. <laughs> I'll, I'll come back to that. Now, remind me to come back to it if I forget, OK? Because sometimes I forget to come back to these things. Now, universities. I've been looking at, at, and, and keeping an eye on some of these things that are going into universe, going on in universities. And I've got three things here, three things for you, OK? Now, when I was at school, <coughs> I went to a very good school, London Oratory School in Fulham. I think it did me really well going to that school. Um, but I didn't go to university. That particular school did push us to go to university. But generally, children in this country, and you are still a child at 16, you know, children in this country um, were not pushed generally, to go to university. When Tony Blair became Prime Minister of this company, oh, he's poked, he keeps poking his bloody head up again. He's poked his head up again this morning. Now, where is it? Just a moment. Here we are. Tony Blair returns to politics. Oh, no. The former Labour leader has been away from frontline politics for a decade. He admitted Brexit has provided him with the motivation to get back into politics. Blair, 63, thinks the views he holds are enough to unite like-minded Britons. He said this is not defying the will of the people. It's saying the will of the people may change when they see the final deal. Well, my will's changed, Tony Blair. My will says, I don't want to see you again. Go away. You've had your chance. You were there for like three, four, ter three and a half terms, was it? Please, Tony Blair, go away, dear. We don't want to see you anymore. You get on our bloody nerves. Go away. There's a lady in charge now. Please, Tony, go away and leave us alone in peace. For God's sake, go and count your money somewhere. Go and count your money. Anyway, let's go back to this. 
um, I've I've been seeing a couple of things going on at universities. Now, and I do wonder what what their people are being taught at university. As I say, I never went to university. I couldn't bear the thought of after doing all that school, going back into basically a glorified school and sitting in a hall for hours on end, listening to someone droning on and on about whatever subject. There's nothing worse, I tell you, than listening to someone droning on and on and on and being boring with one of those monotone vo voices that, you know, a monotone voice is all on the same level. And now we're going to do algebra. 3x plus 2 minus 1, 7 equals the sum of x, 5s. What is... Oh, it's so boring. I do not believe the people that go to university now necessarily go to learn anything. And a lot of them that go to university, they come out with debts of £40,000 and more. <clears throat> Just imagine that, leaving school and having a debt of £40,000, which you don't have to pay, I know, until you get over a certain level, but still, to owe £40,000 and possibly not have a decent job at the end of it because you mucked about too much. You know what it's like when you're young. You don't take things too sensibly. I mean, I still don't take too, things too sensibly now. But you don't when you're young, do you? You just want to have fun. And I'm, 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 I'm a hundred percent sure there's a lot of young people, not children, a lot of young people who go to university for the lifestyle and have no intention of learning stuff. I can't believe it. They just want to go out and do the let's get drunk every night and have parties and sleep with as many people as possible. That is, <laughs> that is the life of a university student. <clears throat> but there's other stuff going on in universities. Now, this was in the Daily Mail uh, last week. Young student, and, and they're, they're also snowflake, offended by everything, left, right and centre. Here we go. Young student union activists, they're the worst sort have asked other conference delegates to wave with jazz hands. Any idea what that is? Jazz hands. Instead of clapping or cheering speakers in case it triggers anxiety among nervous members. And this is not a this is not a joke. This is not a piece of fake news. This is an actual news story, boys and girls. Hundreds were asked to wave in silence because other people found whooping to be super inaccessible. Now, I'll give it to you. Whooping is annoying. There's a bloke who comes, a lovely bloke who comes to Central Station on a Monday night called David. He's one of Ray Reynolds' friends. And if he thinks a singer's really good, he will whoop. Whoop, 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 whoop. And it's bloody annoying. It is annoying. I tell them to shut up. Shut up, David. Clap. Yes. Whoop. No. Nothing works than a whoopsie. Well, in the students' union, hundreds were asked to wave in silence because other people found whooping to be super inaccessible. Now, I don't know what a jazz wave is. I'm just imagining it's something like that. So just, 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 just imagine for a moment. I, I've just finished singing, singing one of my groundbreaking songs at karaoke. Perhaps it could have been, uh, what's one I liked it? Break My Stride. Ain't nothing gonna break my stride. Nobody gonna slow me down. Oh no, I got to keep on moving. Uh. Right, so the song finishes. No one's clapping it. I don't think so. I mean, how disappointed would I be? Manilo ladies, Barry Manilo ladies, can you just imagine being at a Barry Manilo concert and he's just finished one of his classics? Even now. <laughs> How? 
Who thinks of this crap? What sort of stupid people go to these universities now? The request was made at the National Union of Students annual women's conference in Solihull, West Midlands, which started yesterday. Well, that's a bit sexist itself, isn't it? A women's conference. What? So no men allowed? Disgustingly sexist. Well, that's what you'd say about us. NUS Women's Campaign tweeted, Whooping is fun for some, but can be super inaccessible for others, so please try not to whoop. Jazz hands work just as well. No, they don't. Of course they don't. How stupid can you be? <laughs> now, you see, I've got a bit of a... I've got a bit of an idea here. These people who come out with this sort of crap just want attention. I bet whoever came out with this is looking at the... Oh, look, look, I've got my... Oh, look, look, I did this. I did this. That's what it's about. They just want attention. If they want attention, why don't they do a little show like this? Why do you think I do this? Why do I think I do this? Well, I like to chat with you. What a bit of attention. It works for me. Why do you have to come out with sort of upsetting everyone else? <laughs> Waving hands like that all the time. They then followed with, some delegates are requesting that we can move to jazz hands rather than clapping as it's triggering anxiety. Oh, diddums, diddums. Please be mindful. Critics have said the messages have damaged feminism. I, I actually didn't put the, the whole women jazz hands thing together. I, I just thought it was all students, but according to this, it's, it's, uh, it's feminism. I, I, don't, I don't go along with it. I think this is all students, probably. Someone tweeted here, open palms can be triggering. Well, so can closed ones. You should just ban any outward expression of approval completely. Now, can you... <laughs> so again, going back to a Barry Manilow concert, you know, stay... So we'd finish the song, and then we're just supposed to sit there like that. No hands, no clapping, nothing. It says here, the suggestions got more ridiculous and ironic, with Book Geek T tweeting, NUS Women Cam at Little G2, high jazz hands can be triggering because of the quick movement of the hands. I vote blinking rapidly instead. <laughs> These people are for real. This isn't a joke. Jazz hands. Despite the jokes, the National Union of Students said that it is important that they are inclusive. General Secretary of the London School of Economics Students Union says jazz hands are used throughout the NUS in place of clapping as a way to show appreciation of someone's point without interrupting or causing disturbance as it can create anxiety. I'm relatively new to this, and it did feel odd at first, but once you've used jazz hands a couple of times, it becomes a genuinely nice way to show solidarity with a point, and it does add to creating a more inclusive atmosphere. Really? Really? Stupid. Not interesting. Not clever. Stupid. Maybe you think differently, boys and girls. Maybe you think differently. Maybe you think this is a very good idea to use jazz hands. I don't know. I don't even know what jazz hands are. Is it this? Is that it? Or or the, the blinking eyes rapidly. You know, to show appreciation. <laughs> Poor old Frank Sinatra. He wouldn't know what happened to him. And did it my way. <laughs> Here's a question to you, boys and girls. If not the jazz hands or the blinking of eyes, what? Maybe you agree with these. Maybe you think this is a good idea. Here's your chance to call in and tell me. Phone lines are now open. 020 3477 is my phone number. Okay, it'd be lovely to talk to you as always this morning. 020-8144-3477 for the phone number. 
I want you to forget the women's, um, women's, uh, what do you call it now? Women's, um, uh, feminism. Forget the whole feminism thing here. We're just to look at students as a whole, you know, boys, girls, whatever. Because unlike this story, I'd like to include everyone. What do you think? Do you think that's a good idea? The waving of hands, the blinking of eyes, or what other method would you use to appreciate someone? Phone line 020-844-3477. Or you can Skype in. My Skype name is United Kingdom Talk. Or one word, United Kingdom Talk. Or you can Skype in uh, United Kingdom Talk or phone in 020-844-3477. Or if you put your messages up there, I'll read those out as well, OK? I will indeed. <clears throat> Back to some of your messages here then. Darren says, see your Facebook live from Camden last night. It looked great. Fun. It was fantastic, Darren, last night. Really, really good in there last night. Very pleased with how that went. Uh, Terry H says, I find the music quite annoying as well. Oh, what music is that, Terry? Is it this one, lovey? <laughs> Can you not like that music? It is beyond me how you cannot possibly like that music. It is one of the best tunes of all time. I don't, it's so wonderful. I don't even know that, what the title is, to be honest, Terry. I really don't. <laughs> Elaine wants to know, is Trump another word for no? Incorrect, Elaine. Uh -uh. Trump in the UK can be used as a word for Passing wind. Like, pfft, oh, I've just trumped. Pfft, I've just trumped. That is that is what Trump... That is a, a meaning, one of many meanings for the word Trump. Passing wind. And I don't think Donald knows that. Could you tell him? Are you a friend of his? Can you... Eloise might be, because she's in the US. Do you all know Donald Trump personally? Could you tell him what Trump means in the UK? <laughs> Elaine says, Barry uses jazz hands whenever he makes an entrance. It's cute. What, is, is that jazz hands? Is that what it is? Yeah, but that's that's not the same as appreciating someone. I like what someone's done. I want to clap. Don't you? Jazz hands coming on the stage. That's all right. Whatever Barry does is all right, as you well know, my dear. Thank you. Uh, Darren says, getting drunk and doing doing bad, naughty things to each other every night seems to be a great reason to go to university. Yeah, not for £9,000. Be cheaper to get a prosy round, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Eloise says, no jazz hands for Barry. Jazz, jazz, jazz. Elaine says, whenever he was on Graham Norton or Jonathan Ross, he always entered with jazz hands. Yes, but that's him coming on, not, not people appreciating him. We're talking about the audience uh, appreciating someone. You've got to clap, haven't you? That's not the only student thing. I've Wait till the next one's even better. The next one's even better. <clears throat> Elaine says, I think people should clap their thumbnails together. That would be a quiet way to sow appreciation. Let's try that now. <laughs> I'd leave the stage if people started doing that to me. <laughs> Elena, Elena Eloise uh, want to make a point there to say that they are not Trump supporters. Not even if it's just passing wind. <laughs> Here's the other student union type thing this morning. <clears throat> this is in, and we've gone up market today, The Telegraph. This was in The Telegraph. Um, what's the date of this one? It was last week sometime. Yes, uh, last week again. Students. <coughs> excuse me. Students who avoid making eye contact with their peers could be guilty of racism, according to the Oxford University's latest guidance. The university's Equality and Diversity Unit has advised students that not speaking directly to people could be deemed a racial microaggression, which can lead to mental ill health. 
This is what they're teaching at universities. I'm so glad I never went. No wonder they're all wandering around London uh, thinking they're better than everyone when this crap is coming out all the time. Other examples of everyday racism, OK, include someone where they are originally from, students were told. Sorry, I'll, I'll read that again. Other examples of everyday racism include asking someone where they are originally from, students were told. So it's, it's like, like me when I'm on the stage sometimes doing my karaoke. And let's have, I don't know, let's think of a foreign name. Let's have, uh, let's have Chai. Chai is one of our excellent karaoke singers. He's from Malaysia. Lovely chap. But, you know, maybe I never met him before. Let's have Chai on the stage. So he comes up, hello, Chris. And immediately you can hear an accent. Now, the looks of someone doesn't indicate always where they're from. They can be English. As you well know, we have English Asians, English black people, English Chinese people, but they're not actually Chinese. They're English. They were born here. They are English. So you can't tell by how they look. But the accent is usually a bit of a giveaway. You know, if you've been over here, you're unlikely to sound that you're like, like you're from France, are you? If you were born here, OK, you're unlikely to sound like you're French. Do you know what I mean? So Chai might come on the stage. And hello, Chai, where are you from? Now, that could, according to the Oxford University, that could be considered racism. Oxford University's Equality and Diversity Unit explains in its Trinity Term newsletter that some people who do these things may be entirely well-meaning. Hello, yes, me. Uh, and would be mortified to realise that they had called offence. But this is of little consequence if a possible effect of their words or actions is to suggest that people that they may feel a negative stereotype or do not belong. Universities have been accused of pandering to the snowflake generation of students who are seen as oversensitive and quick to take offence. Oh, my God, we meet them all the time now, don't we? We meet them all. I tell them where to get off now because I can't be bothered anymore. I really can't be bothered with this stupidness. Is anyone learning anything at university now or are they just thinking of new ways to be offended? How could I offend you this morning? What could I do to offend you this morning? Maybe I have already. Good. Turn it off if you don't like it. I'm not interested in the comments. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Dr Joanna Williams, a lecturer in higher education uh, at the University of Kent, said the guidance was completely ridiculous and will make students hypersensitive. This is just making them even more sensitive. Oh, that's really offensive. That's really offensive. Oh, you've offended me. Essentially, people are being accused of a thought crime, Dr Williams told The Telegraph. They are being accused of thinking incorrect thoughts based on an assumption of where they may or may not be looking. And remember, these are young people. So you get something in their heads and it carries through. And it's not good once they come into normal life. <clears throat> Dr Williams, who is the author of Academic Freedom in an Age of Conformity, said that Oxford University's guidance was overstepping the mark by telling students how they should feel and think. She said, instead of people seeing each other as potential friends equals these re-racialised academia, they force people to see each other as a person of colour. They force people to be put into boxes about identity. <clears throat> it's just ridiculous. It's really problematic. It means people can't relate to each other naturally and they have rules in the back of their minds and they can't be spontaneous or their interactions are all overlaid with the desire to follow all these rules. La rules. Last year, Oxford Law students were told they could skip lectures covering violent cases if they feared the content would be too distressing. I mean, how stupid is that? 
Let me read that for you again. Last year, Oxford Law students were told they could skip lectures covering violent cases in case they feared the content would be too distressing. Well, how on earth are they going to learn how to defend or prosecute people in court? If they, if they are frightened... <laughs> It's just ridiculous. Earlier this year, it emerged that Cardiff Metropolitan University banned phrases such as right-hand man and gentleman's agreement under its code of practice on inclusive language. Crap. That's what it is, crap. The university guidance dictates that Gender-neutral terms should be used where possible, adding that students should not allow their cultural background to affect their choice of words. It goes on. The University of Glasgow has started issuing trigger warnings for theology students studying the crucifixion of Jesus, whereby students are told they may see distressing images and are given the opportunity to leave. The term snowflake generation was one of Collins Dictionary 2016 words of the year. Collins defines the term as the young adults of 2010, viewed as being less resilient and more prone to take an offence than previous generations. Don't you need a bit of resilience in life? Oh my God! Because let me tell you, in the job that I do for years as a DJ, standing during karaoke quiz nights, you need to be resilient. You need to be able to take and ignore the crap that people throw at you. <clears throat> An example. Have you got the new one by Britney Spears? No, I haven't got it. Why haven't you got it? What sort of DJ are you? Well, I haven't got it. And then they start attacking verbally. They start attacking you verbally. And you just stand there and smile. Anything else I can get you? And they go on and on. And you just stand there and smile. Have you got anything to say? No, nope, I haven't got the song. And they go on and on. And you just stand there and smile. And eventually you just go away. Let's turn that around. Have you got Britney Spears? No, I haven't got that one, I'm afraid. Why not? Oh, no, you've really offended me. No, no. Why haven't you got it? I have, I'm, oh, yeah, I'm being offended. I'm being offended. These people have got no resilience. They're just offended all the time. An Oxford University spokes, spokesman, now they've got that wrong, shouldn't it say spokesperson? Spokesman said, the Equality and Diversity Unit works with university bodies to ensure that universities' pursuit of excellence goes hand in hand with freedom from discrimination and equality of opportunity. The newsletter is one way of advising and supporting, supporting staff towards achieving these aims. I mean, I've never seen so much bull crap in all my life. It really is a joke, isn't it? Elaine says, that's like telling medical students they don't have to watch operations. Oh, I'm sure that happens, Elaine. All right, well, we're going to be doctors today. We're going to show you open heart surgery. But if you feel that you're not happy with this, just leave the room. I wouldn't want someone like that working on me, would you? I want someone who gets blood all over their hands, up their face and all over their clothes. Getting dirty. <laughs> Elaine also says, it's all right, Chris. If I ever came to your karaoke, you can ask me anything you like. <laughs> Darren says, so you have now to look at someone in the eye, but then not ask them where they are from. I bet that took a lot of focus groups to come up with such no good. This is the thing, Darren. This is the thing, isn't it? You know, while they're doing all this focus groups and all this, that and the other, they're not actually learning anything, aren't they? It's just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And the other thing I heard, now I didn't see this in a news story, I just heard this. All universities now, a lot of them at least, have a safe space. <coughs> Any idea what a safe space is in a university? A safe space is where you can go to be completely unoffended by anything. Now, how does that work? 
Does that mean you go in there and no one's talking to each other? Everyone's got their head down so they can't see anything going. Because, you know, I might walk in with this jacket. And people may take offence to this jacket. Because it's wool. And wool comes from sheep. And the sheep might be, you know, the sort of thing. I might look up. They might look up and see see my my age. And they might be offended by my age. How does a, a safe room work or a safe space? <laughs> How on earth are these people going to get on when they leave university? They've got a very, very quick learning curve. If this is what's being taught there now, and I, I'm starting to wonder if this is what the problem is, you know, with radicalisation and all that business. This, this is what's going on in universities. Close them all down, that's what I say. All get out of university and go and get proper jobs, the lot of you. And that's it. <laughs> Darren says, one of my favourite quotes ever is, being offended doesn't make you right. You're absolutely right with that one, Darren. Absolutely right with that one. Uh, got to say good morning to uh, Shania. We're going to wrap up now, boys and girls. Uh, got to say good morning to Shania today. Shania is on a day out with dad. Your dad takes you everywhere, doesn't he, eh? He's fat. You got a wonderful, wonderful dad, Vectis. You got a fantastic dad. He looks after you too. So Shania and uh, her brother Callum and Vectis are on a little trip today to Winchester. I don't know what's in Winchester. What are you doing in Winchester? Not quite sure what's there, but um, have a very, very good time. They were up at 6.15 .15 in the morning, left the house just before 7 o'clock, just like a normal day at work there. So uh, presumably you got the ferry over, the ferry over and um, uh, are, are having a nice time in Winchester. Right, I hope you do. I hope you do. All right, let's do today's uh, birthdays, boys and girls, and then we shall leave and I shall go and do my day's activities. I'm going to swim in shortly. Uh, happy birthday today to Justin Peacock. <clears throat> who runs, and I quote, a pokey little pub up north in Hebel Hempstead. Wonderful little pub, actually, called the Steam Coach. Uh, and it's Justin's birthday today. Uh, I'm not sure if you've got to 50 yet or not, Justin, but um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to look at your picture. You look about 50, so happy birthday this morning to Justin. Looks like you had a good night out the other night. I saw some pictures of you um, just about squeezing in between that chair and table, weren't you? Too? Happy birthday to Justin this morning, Justin Peacock. Happy birthday to Kylie Zass, uh, Michael A. Allen... Michael Daddy Smith, Janania Santos is 32 today, Natalie Hopkins is 35 today, and it's Mark Borden's birthday as well. So happy birthday to you all, boys and girls. Here comes the song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. There we are. Happy birthday, boys and girls. Whatever you're doing today, maybe you've got nothing to do tonight. Is that possible? You've got nothing to do tonight? If so, come along to Bank Holiday Mayday Karaoke. Uh, along with cheap drinks, that's at Central Station tonight, starts at 8 o'clock and finishes at 11.30, right? So karaoke tonight at Central Station, Wharfdale Road, King's Cross on this Monday, starting at 8 o'clock and finishing at 11.30. That's it for the show today, gang. And um, maybe some of the young people watching today, you know, instead of being offended today, instead of being offended, either go and learn something or smile a bit. You'll be a lot happier. See you soon. Bye-bye.